I would like to tell you that my speech will take four hours. So if you want to leave, please do it because it's four hours. I cannot make it uh, in less time. Uh, this morning, I had a problem of health. In the hotel sent me the very nice people and I'm fine now. But I realized that nurses and doctors in Brazil are more, are more be beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they were wonderful. Okay, so I'll start with <clears throat> the subject is urban acupuncture. Because since I've been working for almost 50 years in cities, I have always that optimist approach. I don't have a pessimist approach. So, because it depends. When you project a, a bad tendency, you'll achieve the disaster. On the other hand, if you have your uh, energy to change trends that they are not desirable, you can make it happen. So, I'll start what makes, uh, what is important for a city is having a structure of growth and a strategic vision. But sometimes we forgot the, what is important, is the concept. For me, the city is a structure of living, working, moving, leisure, everything together. We should never separate urban functions. So, and the metaphor I use for the city is the turtle. Why? Because the turtle <coughs> is a structure, it's, it's, it lives and works at the same place <coughs> and moves. So, and, and also the shell of the turtle looks like an urban design, urban tessiture. So we can imagine what could happen if we'll cut the shell of the turtle, living here, working there, leisure there, the turtle is going to die. And that's exactly what's happening in many cities in the world. When we separate urban functions, when we separate people by income, by ages, by religions, uh, starts the disaster. So, for me, what was, which is more terrible is this subject, this guy, Otto, the automobile. Because he is a kind, he is invited to a party and he never wants to leave. And he drinks a lot. And he coughs a lot. And the car is very egotist because it transports only one or two or three passengers. 
and is very demanding person because he wants everything for him. Uh, freeways, more and more works for the car. Other persons are more solidarians. This bus transports 300 people. But another issue I want to show. The city is not a fashion show. I presented in a conference of fashion in Los Angeles. The city is not a fashion show. I gave many examples. So, also a pasta with no sauce. This is not the city. And also the car, which is the cigarette of the future. How many people we have in this room that they smoke? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. One. So, two. You know, 10 years ago, we never thought that it could be possible. And the same is happening with the car. I'm not saying we won't have cars. I'm saying <clears throat> that the, car, the cars will still exist. It will still provide jobs, but the way how we use the car is going to be different. For trips, for leisure, but most important is, is the structure of a city, is the design of a city. Every city has a design because the city goes along the history and the old roads. But we try to give them more possibilities to provide them a new structure with new technologies, but it's always the city follows the past and the old roads, old lines of uh, streetcar, is always, or a train. This is my city, Curitiba. Two million people, three and a half million people in the metropolitan region. As you see, the design of the city is very rational. Why? Because where we have more people living, we have a better public transport. So there are uh, exclu ex exclusively lines. And besides also the normal problems that we have in the city, like healthcare, education, the care of children, safety. Besides these priorities, there is uh, three very important issues that they are becoming important for every city in the world, which is mobility, which is very, very important, and this is an example how we did in Curitiba. It was in 1974, uh, we started the first BRT 
the first BRT in the world with 50,000 passengers a day. Now this system is, is improved, is being improved and improved, and now we are transporting 2 million and 600,000 passengers a day. And the subway in London, 3 million, which is much bigger. But what was the main difference? Uh, we tried to provide to the bus the same performance than a subway. We didn't have money, we didn't, uh, we didn't have loans, and we tried to think what, what, what could be a good system. Exclusively lines, uh, fast boarding, and good frequency. You shouldn't wait more than one minute for the bus. That means a lot for people because at that time, more than 25% of our people, they moved for the public transport because they have a reliable system. And this is how it works. You are boarding and paying before entering and in the bus. And it's faster than a subway to board. And also for handicapped, we have elevators, very simple and they can use the system as any other citizen of the city. So <clears throat> when we started to think in this system, I was working in Rio and the project of uh, oops, the year 2000. And we, at that time, we design a system that integrates the subway with the bus on the surface. So, <clears throat> what I would like to share with you. Uh, if you have a subway, it has to have a, you have to have a smart subway. You, if you have a bus, you have to have a smart bus. That means uh, good frequency, fast boarding, everything. And it is possible. And if you want smart taxi, individual transport without private ownership, that means the Verib in France, all over the world, but we have always uh, the idea of having a small car uh, that could you could share, electric, and we try to design the smallest car in the future, the smallest car in the world. And the half of the size of the smart, the half of the length. And I can fit inside. So we uh, improved the solution. And now this is the car, how it works. It's only 25 kilometers per hour. 150 kilometers of autonomy, and this car is made with paper. Cardboards, honeycomb inside, strong resin, and it's recyclable, besides the wheels and the uh, battery. So we're developing every time trying to think 
that the solution of mobility has to do with different, different systems. So, uh, and this is this our system in Paris, in Berlin. I took this car, and it's it's incredible how the people like it. But what is the idea with the car? Having together with the bus, uh, the bicycles, uh, you know, and also the electric cars. You move them with your cell phone, you pay uh, the consumption of energy. And this is the newest idea for Curitiba. It's a uh, technology of tires, not rails. Tires and a guide that uh, gives to the bus uh, quality and good design. What are the major mistakes that we are doing in, in the cities? Overly relying on cars. Mobility based on technology and performance, which confirms the same dependence. This is the difficulty. The problem in a city is the concept not technology and not performance. For instance, city gadgets, driverless cars, autonomous cars, or what? Cars will still occupy the same city space. This is the biggest problem. So, you can say I have a driverless car, I have an electric car, but you still have the same space. So, when you work with the conception in a city, there is a small solution for mobility. Live closer to work. A city is a structure of living, working, moving, leisure together. So, that's what we are trying to do in Rio, Willy Miller and I, and a good team of professionals. Because there is a huge need for housing. Along the railways, you see just a wall. And our idea is be, uh, instead of this wall, we'll have housing, working spaces, and of course, mobility. That could be a great solution for the city of Rio. We're starting. This is the network in Rio. This is how it was planned before. Uh, uh, integration between the bus and the subway. Okay. In our city, <clears throat> we didn't have green areas, just a half square meter. And now we have 60 square meters of green areas. And we did it in very, in a few years. Uh, uh, agreements with families that kept their green areas and we proposed to them 
we're gonna buy two thirds of your land and we're going, we're going to transform these places in a public park. And same, in the same way, having your house, your property, even one third close to a public space, uh, it would increase the value of the land. So we have, we had 98% of agreements, but they have to sell us for a low price. In a few years, we change rapidly the rate of ratio of green area. These are the parks. Here is the open university for environment. The botanic garden, how much time it takes to build a botanic garden? 100 years. This garden was built in three months. It's not a miracle. We're still going to plant, but now the city, the city is using this, this area. And this is the opera, the wire opera. We built that in two months. We try to find materials. For instance, this, this theater is made with just one material, metallic tubes. We made a, a bid for the material and a bid for the manpower. In two months, it was finished. And that is the program of changing garbage by food, by money. As long as they in hills where it's difficult to collect, so we use we use the. Uh, they had to bring uh, their garbage to a closer place where the truck could achieve. And, and it was a very great success. All the areas that they were um, not clean. Now the people they invested they it was a program very successful. Another issue I would like to just to to discuss is identity and social diversity. So you never rip an old portrait of your family because this portrait is you. So, and that's why every city, not this city which has monuments from UNESCO, I'm saying every normal city has some places they were very important. So this is an old a uh, depot was transformed in a theater and the historic district we and the uh, and hmm, this goes very fast and the pedestrian mall that we did that in 72 days, months, hours. So, and 
One Friday night we started on Monday night it was finished. And all the landmarks, the, for instance, uh, we have a very variety or diversity. Very, Curitiba is a very ethnic, we have a great ethnic contribution. This is the Italian portal, the Ukrainian part, the Polish part, the Japanese part, the German square. So we try to pay homage in a city that has a lot of migrants to increase their identity. But the issue that I would like to discuss with you is how much time it takes to change a city. You can change in three years. It depends. It depends. The uh, decision making. Because I have a saying that is if you want to change, start. So creativity is starting. So these are some examples in the world of urban acupunctures that, for instance, the most genius from EMP in Paris, with one gesture, he solved the problem of the whole Louvre, a problem of centuries. But we have in our city a museum designed by Oscar Niemeyer. He did this project at 95 years. And this museum was built in six, in five months. I'm saying, I'm not trying to play records. I'm just trying to say that it is possible. So, some acupuncture from our team. Uh, the Bossa Nova Park in Rio is still on project. a project we did in the Dominican Republic, which is an island, and we propose the buildings for 150,000 people in between the trees. And they wanted to build a exhibition and a new uh, a new hall of exhibitions i told them it's not it's not necessary because for many years they cut a hill to build a pier so our proposal was to rebuild the reconstruct the hill. Uh, 
This is the Angola, Luanda. If the idea is just to check, just designing a street, how much change we had. Angola is a, <clears throat> was a terrible city. Uh, 30 years during the war, it's very difficult. So we started designing some streets. And then uh, 13 cities, housing programs, but we didn't accept just housing. We told them housing, working, and mobility, everything together. So it took a time, they accepted, and now it's, going to, it's, it's being built. 13 cities. Urban com community. This is a project where <coughs> we finished in the Docklands in Porto Alegre, Brazil, where we proposed with a team of uh, a great architect from Barcelona. Uh, so we worked together to remake, to, to propose a new use for, for this area. And this is the waterfront, the new part of the waterfront, where just stairs, we remove all the uh, equipments, and there is a design, there is a design of the pavement which shines during the day, at night also. And they have a beautiful view in Porto Alegre. So when it finished the sun, uh, sun, how do you say? Oh. Okay. It, the sunlight, it starts to, the, so this is being built and to end some ideas about portable streets. Some streets they have uh, uh, they are in decaying process. How to bring them to life? It will take years until you are going to uh, recycle, rebuild. So we, we worked with portable streets. We're bringing on a, the idea is bringing in a Friday night and removing these streets on a Sunday uh, morning, uh, on a Monday morning. This is how it looks, and who finished. Uh, in 1997, we organized uh, the World Nature Games. We didn't spend one ruble for to organizing this World Nature Game because it was in the nature. It was ballooning, climbing the waterfall in a beautiful surrounding. We didn't spend one, one ruble. And this is how you can build cultural facilities. We recycled 10 buses. Uh, one bus for theater, one for music, one for opera, 
And this convoy went to all the cities in my state. So it's very simple. And we had around 1,500 uh, people in every presentation. So that's what, what I want to tell you is this. I hate waste. Uh, for me, sustainability is an equation between what you save and what you waste. So, uh, you, you don't need too much money to, to make a change. If you want to change the city, just have uh, a scenario, an idea, a project that everyone or the large majority will, they understand that they agree with this and they'll help you to make it happen. So, to finish, I'm a very happy man because during my life I could make many dreams come true. I'm not saying political dreams, I'm not saying professional dreams. I'm saying uh, normal dreams. Having a wedding from your daughter or normal dreams, but I realize during the years, if you can not fulfill your dream, don't be pessimist. If you dedicate yourself deeply to your dream, one day your dream will go around you, will hit you. You remember me, I'm your dream. It's your second chance. You cannot lose it. Thank you.
I I learned during 50 years working in cities that a city is not so complex that the complexity sellers want us to understand. So, very simple. It has to have a structure. You have to, pro you know, proposing a scenario. Every person in the city, if uh, there are people from a community, they can propose. Or if there are people from the planning sector, they can propose. Just propose. And uh, every time you have an answer, and this will increase the quality of your action. Uh, we made many mistakes, but our main idea is that planning is like a trajectory where you can leave, you have to leave space to people to correct you when you are not on the right track. So, and when speaking about future, uh, I give an example. The city of the future physically is not, no, the city of the past physically is not so different than the cities from the present. Why we should think that in the future the cities will be so different physically? But the great change has already, we have this already. The great change is the services, uh, the provider of jobs. They are reducing the scale and they can fit better in the city. So you can live closer to your work. I hate the city of Sao Paulo. Don't tell them. <laughs> because uh, you have to travel three hours from your uh, living place and then to your working. It's not necessary. Uh, helicopters they have. So, and we have Uber of helicopters. Yes. Uber of helicopters. This is sad. It's crazy. And we have ghettos of very rich people, very poor people. And it's not necessary. They are building rich condominiums. and they want to put everything inside the walls. I was one time in Paris. I found out uh, the less expensive apartment that I found. It was in a good neighborhood, an apartment of 130,000 euros. It's nothing. Of course, the apartment has 10 square meters. <laughs> but they don't, they don't need more because everything is on the streets. Shops, everything. Cafes, restaurants. 
And in these condominiums, they want to put everything inside the walls. So it's very costly. And every time when you have to leave these walls, there are going to be people that they are waiting for you to rob you. So, uh, I, I have to tell you, I'm very, in many places, in many countries, I've got so disappointed. I went in the U.S., many, many cities. I tried to ask the people, they, they were in the planning department, can you please, can you give me an idea, what is the structure of growth of this city? And from what the citizen of this city are making their living? And they, they design vectors, nothing designed. So vectors and uh, long diagnostics, you can never, uh, when you work in a city, you can never separate the diagnostic with the proposal. That's, the moment you see the city, you, you know, or you know what is happening. So the diagnostic is to help you to balance alternatives. So I'm not against, it, against doing that, but you have to keep your eye in the city. Uh, the city. The city is not for pessimists. Cities are for optimists. That's why we decided to live in cities. Because I love cities. Of course, I love this city. Uh, I'm a widow. If there is any uh, young architect she wants, uh, I'll stay here for her. So, we'll find, we'll find somebody for you. Okay. <laughs> Just the, don't leave too soon. Okay. This city is incredible. But you have the historic places. And you have what is growing behind. So, the new, the new, Oh, settlements, they don't have to be uh, so you could have very new ones, beautiful. In Barcelona they did this. In Rio we were trying to do this. So our task is to propose. Starting as is creativity is starting. Don't don't have fear to start. Because see you don't have to have all the answers. Because if you want all the answers, you'll never, you'll never get. So, uh, I'm talking too much. 
so don't try to have all the answers. If you have an idea about culture, do it. If you have an idea about public transport, do it. On the time being, they are going to integrate themselves. But not at the start. That's why I choose to work with urban acupuncture. It's like choosing a punctual idea that can make an important change. It's like uh, in medicines, a new energy. So, it's not instead of the planning of the city. It's, it's to help the process of planning. So, again, I think this is a testimony in my elders yours uh, just to tell you that you can make so wonderful work uh, you don't have uh, I would say start uh, sometimes we we don't start because oh this is a very good idea, but probably uh, it couldn't be mine. It's insecurity. So, and, and let the bureaucrats don't pay attention to the bureaucrats. Because they want to kill your creativity. Because they are understanding that they are not so creative than you. <laughs> Traffic engineers. We should beat them. There are traffic engineers in this room. <laughs> we should beat them with slippers. How far they can destroy a city? Public transport has to ha be a friendly system, not a road. So, I'm sorry, I took too much time. And it, it, it was a great pleasure. Great pleasure. And how this city could be a great example for the world. Don't believe in pessimists. Leave them in the coffee shop and ah, ah.